This afternoon will be very interesting. <laughs> uh, we've been talking about uh, the, what is activating our genes, right? And, uh, yesterday, as I was giving lecture, uh, uh, I showed you a cell and uh, there's a very interesting structure called uh, mitochondria, right? Mm -hmm. These are mitochondria. Let me show you. Uh, this is another picture of cell. Mitoc this is a nucleus. And mitochondria look like this. Okay. Yeah. What does this mitochondria do? Uh. It's like gasoline, it's like fuel. <laughs> Uh, no, it's just like an engine. Okay, yeah, an engine. Into the engine, we have what? Gasoline comes in, and the air, the oxygen comes in. And then what happens? And then combustion. The combustion simply does not start that way. It always requires what? Ignition, right? Ignition, yeah. And we have cars parked out there. And inside the engine, there's a gasoline, right? Mm -hmm. And there's air and oxygen, of course. But cars is dead, right? Mm -hmm. And the engine is not running. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there is no what? No sparks. No ignitions are turned off. When ignition is turned off, there's no sparks. The car to move continually inside the engine, there has to be what? Continual spark has to happen, right? Spark, 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 spark. You know what? Our cell is just like a car, and there's a what? Engine in our cell is just mitochondria. The combustion happens in the mitochondria. Into the com into this combustion cham chamber, which is the engine, then sugar, which is like a gasoline, the fuel, goes into the mitochondria, and then oxygen comes in, and then there is a spark. What is our spark? Do you know? In certain situation, that spark is off now. Then what happened? In what kind of situation? We said we say what? Oh, he passed out. <laughs> when you passed out, <laughs> yeah. In what situation, we human being passed out? Huh? Pass out. In what kind of situation? Bad situation. Yeah, bad situation. Yeah. Of course, when there's no oxygen, we pass out, yeah? Because there's no more uh, combustion, right? Yeah. So, we have to have continual combustion happening. Of course, to have the combustion, we need oxygen. So, if you cut off the oxygen supply, you pass out. If you, what? Uh, stop the supply of what? Sugar, you pass out. That's why when you have a low blood sugar, you pass out. Yeah. But when you have oxygen coming, sugar is plenty, and people pass out. When? When that spark is <laughs> off, see? What is spark? Something very interesting, right? We need to find out what are those sparks which is being coming to us, right? So even though we cannot see the spark coming, there are sparks. To understand the nature of the sparks, we need to think a little bit. We do pass out sometimes. I don't know whether you have that uh, experience or not. But you, 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 you are not really 
short of supply of the sugar. You're not short of supply of the air. You're breathing well. You ate your lunch very good, right? And there's a plenty of the uh, storage of the glycogen in your muscle and the liver. And yet you pass out. Why? In what situation you pass out? Yeah, fear. Hmm? Fear. Fear. Yeah. When you're so scared. Whoa! <laughs> That means fear is cutting off what? Spark. Yeah. Yeah. What a revelation, right? And what else? What else? Shocked about what? Bad news. What kind of bad news? You are so tricked, right? And this guy deceived you so bad. And this guy you trusted. He's your friend, you know. And this guy, you know, he came to you and he got all your savings. You said, okay, buddy, for six months. <laughs> you saved that money, you know, to buy, uh, like in Korea, you know. You have to buy house with the cash, you know. Not like it here, okay? Yeah. So, there are many people are saving money for 10 years, 15 years to buy an apartment. Yeah. And then you almost collected that, you know, saved that much money. Then your friend comes. <coughs> I'm in bad situation in my business. If I, if you can give me that money, six months later, I'll give you ten thousand more. And he trusted. He gave. Gave the money. And what happened? This guy came to Las Vegas. You know? And money's gone. You're so deceived. Oh. You can pass out, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, when I, as a Korean, I come to the States and, uh, uh, uh these Americans don't pass out very easily. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I noticed difference. Uh, unfortunately, we Korean pass out. <laughs> and like a, you know, typhoon, you know, and then all, you know, we were amazed at, the, you know, like when hurricane comes to Florida and then people comes out, they see the devastating, you know, destruction <laughs> and the people say what? Okay, we can start again, you know, and, you know, wow, wow, that's good, you know, and I've been thinking about why. You know, it's because of difference in philosophy of life. Mm -hmm. In American philosophy, there is what? Deeply founded upon what? Christianity. Mm -hmm. You have God. Mm -hmm. See? And uh, in Oriental countries, we really don't have God, you know? Yeah. And so nowadays, it, the Christianity is now flourishing. But before, uh-uh. Who was God? Dragon was God. <laughs> you know, really, dragons all over the place, you know. We didn't really have the picture of God like Jesus. So, we don't have, I don't think we did have a uh, sufficient amount of spiritual reserve power, you know, to be able to withstand that kind of disaster. And, uh, so, uh, it's, uh, but I'm glad, you know, now I have, uh, I have this Jesus and I can really, I don't, I don't have to pass out. <laughs> no matter what kind of situation, you know, uh, you know, it just, uh, I can be calm and, uh, you know, I know he will fix all the, you know, situations. And <clears throat> so when you're facing force, deception, 
which is against what? The truth. Therefore, when you have the truth, when you find the truth, then you say what? Yes, this is right. Oh boy, I'm so happy. How come nobody ever told me that? <laughs> then you're invigorated. You, you, you find what? You, your cell is producing more energy. Why? Because even though you have the same fuel, same amount of oxygen comes, you have what? More sparks. Then your efficiency of producing energy is what? Much better. See? So, even though you ate same amount of food, you breathe same amount of oxygen, you have more sparks coming and your efficiency to produce energy is much better. See? So, we need to know about the spark. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, uh, when you find, when you find such a deception, oh, how can you do that to me? You know? Then, woman pass out. Okay. And, and then what? It is so evil, such evil, then pass out. So, what is then spark? If evil cut off this spark, then what is the nature of spark? Love. Goodness, isn't it? The opposite to the evil is goodness. That's why when somebody else do so such a favor to you and you're so thankful, thank you, thank you so much, and you feel what? Energetic, isn't it? Yeah. Then even later on, even next year, you talk about that again. You know, I met, huh? I met uh, Jerry in the, in the desert and he helped me. I can never forget him. I'm still what? Invigorated. Goodness. Goodness. The truth and goodness and what else? Beauty. When it is so ugly, you feel like a pass out, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. My wife will pass out if it is ugly, you know. <laughs> so, uh, if she'll pass out if I have something on my shirt, you know. <laughs> Can't stand that, you know. Honey, change! <laughs> Why? Yeah. I have a wrinkle here. You know, if my wife is here, there's not going to be wrinkle here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. She may pass out. <laughs> you know. So, it's beautiful. Look at the, look at the Yosemite. Beautiful. Then you feel, wow, I'm, I don't feel tired. Right? Why? Because when you produce energy, you don't feel tired. No matter how good food you eat, no matter how good air you breathe, all inside of you is filled up what? Hopelessness, ugliness, right? Then you don't produce, you know, because you're cutting off all these sparks coming from outside. You cut them off. That's why you don't really produce enough energy. That's why you feel, still feel so wiped out. Tired, you know. So that's why when you're depressed, you're tired, even after eating, you know, even after resting. Why? Because of that depression, all this what? Worry, fear, <gasps> this is cutting off what? Sparks coming in from outside. Therefore, your mitochondria cannot, there's no what? Combust, enough combustion going on. That's why you feel tired. See? So now we learned the nature of what? Nature of sparks, right? Nature of sparks. Nature of sparks is truth, goodness, and what? Beauty. Something has to be so true to be spark. Something has to be so good to be spark. Something has to be so beautiful 
to this part. What, what is something which have all three of them together? That's love. Love is always truthful. Love is always what good. Love is beautiful. You know. That's why when you sense love, you are more invigorated. See? Yeah. And uh, you definitely produce more energies. Right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> this, this love, that's why God is what? Love. That's why God is love. It is spark give us life. Without spark, there's no production, no combustion of the energy, right? No combustion in the uh, mitochondria. Therefore, you have no life. You're dead. See? Yeah. So that's why to do the proper new start program, you need to pursue to receive what? Sparks, yes. But there are so many people receive something which will cut off the spark. You know? Isn't that interesting? There are spark. There's a love. There's a beauty. Look at these flowers there, you know, on the picture. Wow! What a sparky flowers, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, I'm going to Buffalo next uh, spring, I think, I think it was uh, April uh, sometime, and uh, somebody called Sparky sent me email <laughs> <laughs> to invite her church, you know, and so I, the name was so impressive, and I said, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> her name is, her name is Sparky, you know, Sparky. And uh, so, Spark is not inside of you. Spark has to come, what? From outside. Yeah. Car engine does not have spark inside. The spark coming from ignition, right? From battery. Yeah. And it needs to be what? Connected. See? Wow. It's the same principle. We need to be connected to the power source. See? Then spark comes. You know, spark. You know. Spark, spark, spark. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, yeah. See, like if you can have this spark, like when you are bombarded with this what? This what can we say? Anti-spark, right? All these fear, worry, you know, uh, you know, anger inside, um, doubt, you know, hopelessness, you know. And then you look at the picture. Do you feel the spark? No. 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 You don't see it. Isn't that interesting? The same picture. Wow. Look at that, you know. Like, uh, um, I don't speak bad about Koreans, you know, but, uh, you know, since I'm, I'm a Korean living in America, I found a lot of contrast, you know. And I used to say, Americans are so noisy, you know, they, they are so noisy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They say, oh, look at the picture. Oh, how beautiful. Uh, uh. Oh, they are bubbling up too much. You know, it's so much. Uh, uh. But now, you know what? Since I become a Christian, I am finding I'm doing that. Yeah. I find I'm doing that really too much. Because, uh, <clears throat> you know, nowadays, you know, like, uh, uh, especially in Georgia, I moved to Georgia, you know, it, it's a North Georgia called about an hour north to the uh, North Carolina side, the Tennessee side. 
and it's sort of mountainous. It's beautiful up there. It is. Um, it's not as beautiful as Yosemite, yeah, or you know, uh, uh, Canadian Rockies or Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I am so much enjoying. You know, I love to drive. Wow. And I feel like I become a noisy American. <laughs> and my genes is receiving what? So much spark coming from outside. You know? You know what? If you're angry at someone, if you hate, you, you're completely what? Engulfed with what? By the hatred. No. You go to your cemetery with the hatred. Are you going to enjoy that? No, no, no. You know what hatred is? It's the anti-spark coming from Satan. See? Yeah. And this is my remote control, okay? I send the signal from here, okay? From here. And signal goes to where? Goes to this antenna, okay? And this signal is now going into my, into? My computer. Okay. That's how I can remote control my, uh, my computer. Okay. This is my second one. Okay. This is kind of expensive one. $200. And I had a little cheaper one. About $125 one. And it was working fine. I was very happy with them. And one day, it's not working. The first one, you know. Huh, I was so frustrated. And I couldn't figure out. Everything looks, seems to be fine. But I had to give lecture. Anyway, I need this, right? So I had to order, you know, uh, and to uh, send me a Feathered Express, right? So I ordered this, it came next day. And it was some kind of instructions, you know, how to use. And one of the instructions says, do, please do not put this antenna close to the electronic you know, machine, you know. I was putting antenna too close to the speaker, you know. So I went there, I, <laughs> and I, I, what? I put far away from the speaker. We had one of speaker here, right? Two speakers, both sides. And I put that antenna right next to the speaker. That antenna was receiving what? Signal from speakers, interfering speakers. That's why my real signal is not reaching to the antenna. You know what? This is depression, you know that? <laughs> this is depression. You have too much of what? Interference. Yeah. Interfering signal is what? Interrupting, interfering the real spark to get into the computer. So that's why I end up having two <laughs> remote control. So now I have a good lesson, you know. Are you too close to the speakers? <laughs> right? See, this is the problem, see. Yeah. So many people are so close to the speakers making so much noise. Yeah. Worry about that. Worry about this, worry about your children, worry about your daughter, worry about your grandchildren, worry about you. Yeah. All these noisy signals coming. And you have no time to be able to what? Really receive the real spark which will give you what? Power, you know, an activation of the genes and so on. Right? So, 
having this concept, if, when, if you have this concept solidly established in your mind, then you're now ready to read the Bible. Really. Bible talk about this. See? Yeah. Of course, the speakers are the what? The Satan and his angels, right? <laughs> Evil angels. They speak to you. Constantly they speak to you. They are indeed speakers. Yeah. Yeah. But you must hear what? Prophet, right? <laughs> yeah. Not just speakers. Yeah. Speakers without prophecy, you know? And those are the speakers. And uh, <clears throat> so, the spark is so important. Then you can understand so-called, we call it emotional a problem called a depression. And then you can understand the whole thing. There are so many people are living with the speakers. Speakers speak all kind of thing into their mind. You know, yeah. and they are not truth. They are not truth. They many people believe in what? It's a false speaking. See, so that's why it is important to know the truth. To know the truth. Okay. And this is cell. Uh, Okay, nucleus, chromosome, genes, and this is mitochondria. There are some people who are very energetic, they are not tired, you know. Uh, some people can climb up the, what, uh, hill very well, <sighs> and they even enjoy it. But some of you... Oh boy! Yeah. yeah. You know what? What is the difference? It's a because difference in mit mitochondria. Well, what kind of car goes uphill so so good? More power. Yeah, more power with the what kind of car? Eight cylinder, right? Yeah, V eight goes. <laughs> no problem. But when you have four cylinder, it goes what? <laughs> like that. <laughs> because it doesn't produce that much energy. You know, you know what? We human being is also like that. Uh, some of you are eight cylinder. Some of you only what? Two cylinder. <laughs> uh, if a little bit of exercise just exhausts you, ah, ah, poops you out. That's right. Indeed, if we take out your cells and what? Look under the microscope, there's a difference in numbers of mitochondria. Mm. Yes. Marathoners, right? Boy, they have 24 cylinders. Mm. Yeah, very powerful. You know. Even though you are a good marathoner, you, are, you have two, 24 cylinders. Let's say you have automobile accident, and then you have to be casted, you know, and three months on the bed. You know what happened after three months, end of three months? You're only going to have four cylinder left. Your mitochondria, shh, you know, goes down in number when you don't need them. But if he is now recovered, and what? So the running exercise again, with the chondria, six, eight, you know, it increase. And scientists found this is fascinating. How can it do that? You know what scientists found out? It can multiply, right? What kind of thing? Cells multiply. Why cells multiply? Because cell has genes. Because gene multiplies. You know what scientists lately found out? Mitochondria multiplies because mitochondria has what? Has its own gene. Doctors call that mitochondrial DNAs. You know? We didn't know that a long time ago. 
You know, this is most recent findings. Okay, so mitochondria, since gene is responding to the need, right? Mitochondria will respond to your what need. That's why when you do the exercise, mitochondria, oh, we need to, uh, we, you know, God says we need more. Then God will send His spark to mitochondrial gene, and what? Make it duplicate. See, and multiply. See. So mitochondria and can uh, increase, and here comes sugar. Okay, sugar, and here comes. Oxygen. And then, here comes what? Sparks. Okay. Then, there's a production of what? Heat. Okay. Heat. And then, what? Power. Then, <coughs> electricity. See? All living creatures produce electricity, right? Your brain produces electricity, your heart produces electricity, so that's why we can what? We can take a EKG, right? The electrical activity being produced in your heart. So if your heart is wrong, then electrical activity goes wrong too. So all this energy we call, uh, all this thing we call what? All together, energy, right? Energy. Yeah. energy. Yeah. So this energy is produced by this uh, spark. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we learned the spark, the nature of this spark. Spark is uh, what? Truth, right? Goodness and beauty equals what? Love. Love. When scientists observed observed a, uh, 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 the, the rats in the laboratory, when they mommy my mother rats have the babies, and they've observed. The mommy is keep on licking the baby. Why? You know, because they just keep on licking the baby. One by one. And they thought, hmm, we need to find out why. You know. So if there is a ten litter, they took out what? Five of them away after what? Being fed with the mommy's milk. So they separated them away. Even though they are eating same kind of milk, you know what? Five days later, days of separation, you know what they found out? The babies with mother keep on licking, being, receiving the licking service, they are growing much stronger. The weight gain is much more consistent. On the other hand, the babies who's what? Taken away from mother after being fed, not growing. So they took the blood sample and then they found out the growth hormone level is much lower where the baby's taken out, taken away from mother, not receiving the licking service. Isn't that interesting? Where is the growth hormone is produced? From the pituitary gland, there is a growth hormone producing gene. So, in other words, the babies who are separated away from mother, the growth hormone gene is what? Not activated. By licking, this is activated. See? So it is what? It's not just the food alone. It is what? Licking. Licking can activate the gene. Licking is what? Expression of love, isn't it? Yeah. 
Do you think if scientists mimic the licking, they have a little brush, you know, then initially they do, they do. See, initially they do produce some growth hormone, but later on what? They don't. It's very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> you know, there is an uh, immune cell called T cells, right? Okay, this is cancer cell and this is T cells, a surrounding cancer cell to attack cancer cell. And these T cells are very sensitive to what you feel, you know? So, and the scientists found out there's another different kind of cell called the natural killer cell. Similar to the T cells, but they're a little bit different. Uh, natural killer cell work like this. Uh, this is the NK cell, natural killer cell. This is cancer cell. They were what? They are fighting, oh, it's what, they, they, they're excellent in what? Contact fighting. Okay. And so, their expert, these natural killer cells are expert in, in, uh, stabbing cancer cells to death. You know. So, this is knife. They produce this knife inside them, you know. And then they, cancer cell punctured. Look at that. See? Yeah. And the, the liquid content of cancer cell is all spilled out and cancer cell is dying. So this, this natural killer cell, you know, uh, uh, is expert in what? In contact killing. You know. And uh, there are many e uh, interesting experimentation in terms of uh, 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 finding out how T cell and natural killer cell works. About, uh, 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 ten, year, about 10 years ago, yeah, about a little bit less than 10 years ago, and it became very popular uh, for the, uh, the doctors are using something called positive imagery therapy. Okay, positive imagery therapy. What it is, is when they found this natural killer cell, we can measure the activity of natural killer cell in the laboratory. So what they have done was, they collect cancer patient, okay, and then they will make those cancer patient have positive imagery. So what they do is, usually about 12 cancer patients in one group, okay, they gather in a nice room, quiet room, with a very excellent, you know, a, a sound system, you know, and they used a lot of sound to create what? Positive imagery, okay. And so they say, you know, they give a little lecture how a uh, natural killer cell can kill the cancer cell. You know. Then they say, you need to imagine about this. You know. So how they do? Uh, they make them hold hand, close their eyes, you know. Then they turn on CDs. And then beautiful music comes. And then gradually it is fading in to the ocean wave sound. And then, and then this instructor says, now you're at the quiet beach. I want you to imagine that you are on the beach. The skies are blue. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day. Water is calm. An occasional sound, you know, wave comes and breaks. Then, way back in background, there was a sound. 
seagulls. There's seagulls coming, flying, you know. And, they, and that seagulls are your natural killer cells. Then the sound of seagulls become more and more. So many, you can't even count them, you know. Then, then suddenly there's some, you know, sort of disaster. All kind of noise. What, what's happening? Seagulls are catching the fishes. And what the fishes are? Your cancer cells. Yeah. So they got together. Oh, like that. Positively imagining. You know, there's a, quite a few studies done this way, okay? Then after that, so they measure the activity of the natural killer cell before the positive imagery and after the positive imagery. They can definitely demonstrate in the laboratory after the imagery, the natural killer cell activity increased. And cancer is shrinking. Hmm. Do you know why it is not being done now? It didn't last that long, you know, because as, as you go to them as a cancer patient, repeat, you know, it, it becomes silly, you know, silly each time, right? Ah, uh, I'd rather do it at home, you know. <laughs> what? What's, what's going down? The meaning, meaningfulness is becoming less and less. Why? Because it is not what? Because it is not the truth. It's not real spark. It's a fake spark. Our genes, as I told you yesterday, can respond to the what? Fake too. If you applied meaning, good meaning to it. Okay. But it cannot last. To last forever, you have to have what? A real, solid, true meaning. Right? Yes. Yes. So, that's why we're doing this New Start program. You know, when you know the truth, wow, I see. Then, you have to choose not the fake spark. You have to choose what? True spark. Yeah. Something will last forever. Right? Which will never change because time passed. Right? Yeah. A solid spark. That means what? Solid what? Solid truth. Right? Yeah. Unchangeable truth. Which will give you so much meaning. Then what? Solid goodness. Right? Then solid beauty. And that means what? Love of God, isn't it? Praise God, right? It's, that's why as you begin to sense, begin to learn love of God, wow, you know. I was so amazed this morning walk, you know, this, this cactus, right? This round guys, you know, oh, how pretty guys, you know. And I saw the tiny guys, you know, there's a three of them. You only said two, but I, I found Sorry. another one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit, little bit distant, about, you know, uh, about ten inches away. Yeah. There's another guy. Boy, this guy, tiny guy is becoming like huge, you know. So interesting, you know. And if you look at the characters, oh, this is just dangerous, you know. I hate the needle. <laughs> <laughs> That's being foolish, you know. You need to be wise. Wise means what? Receive the spark the way God intended to. Right? Yes. So, many people refuse to see that. Refuse to have that. Because if you look around, my, they're full of sparks around you, see. 
So that's why there's so many beautiful things. Whatever God made, just, just beautiful they are, right? So cute. And uh, so even your T cell, your, your natural killer cells will respond to the what? Meaning, even though it is what? Artificially fake, right? Even though it is your simply positively imagining, right? Still, that is working, right? Then, can you imagine how much more it can be so powerful when you're dealing with what? Solidly true. Solidly what? Good and beautiful. See? It can be powerful. See? So, this New Start message we have is very solidly powerful. And when you really, when your heart is completely opened, like a patient I talked to you this morning, right? That diabetic patient, you know, who believed what? Impossible. The fact, scientific fact, which is a statistical fact. But you know what? We are supposed to believe extraordinary truth, not the statistical fact. See? Truth of God is always what? Extraordinary in this ordinary factual world. See? This whole entire world is a world of the fact. See? But we are not supposed to live the fact. We need to live what? Extraordinary life. Experiencing extraordinary truth of God. See? Yeah. And so, <clears throat> that's why we're doing this. See? That's why the God's people, the true remnant of this world, really, at end time, need to what? Experience this wonderful spark. This spark is really actually Lateran Holy Spirit. Sparks! Suddenly you begin to see, wow, you know, wow. And it will come from the Word of God, from the nature, from everywhere. If you're willing to what? Accept. Willing to receive. It's going to be given to you. Yeah. See? So, that's why you need to struggle. You need to fight with what? Speakers. Interfering signals. Really? Yes. There are so many people accept interfering signals so easily. Well, I'm worried, you know. Isn't it easy to worry? Isn't it easy to be angry? Isn't it easy to hate? When somebody else, you know, insults you? Do you have to try so hard to hate him? No, you don't need any effort whatsoever. It is just so natural for us to hate when somebody harms you, right? But it is, it is amazing. And I thought it was so impossible to what? To understand my enemy who insult me. You know, it seems to be so impossible. But now, finally, you know, I begin to find myself. Okay. You can, you know, it's possible for him to think that way. You know? So it doesn't bother me that much. I feel so wonderful. Wow. I, I begin, to, uh, uh, begin to realize I have somewhat spiritual reserve to embrace that. I don't have to pass out because he insulted me. You know? <laughs> this is wonderful. Then I can have some peace. You know? you know, it is very important that you need to resist the speaker's noise. Okay? 
which comes to you make you worried about something. Which come to you make you angry. Which come to you and make you doubt. You know, if you sit there just listen to that speaker speak, you are in doubt. You are hopeless. Mm. Uh, uh. Mm. What spark is continually what going down, down, down. See? You have to preserve the spark Amen. by refusing to accept what this noisy speaker's signal. Especially, see, I, 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 I really stress this point to the many cancer patients. Because cancer patients are really scared, you know? They're scared. When they're with other people, you know, then uh, not so scared. Why? Because when you have this kind of group together, you feel very safe, you know? Why? Because uh, those speakers don't make that much noise. Because you don't have time to hear that, you know. Because you, you're busy to hearing what? Talking something good. See? While you're doing so, speakers does not speak that much. But when you become so close to speakers, even though in the group you're not listening, you're what? Listening to the speakers. Really? Yes. That happens. You don't, you cannot pay attention. You simply keep on paying attention to what? The speakers which you're so acquainted with. Yeah. This you need to extraordinarily refuse. Really. If you don't refuse, it's yours. <laughs> you know, it's free. <laughs> yeah. It's a free gift. And it's going to harm you. Think about this. Even a what? Artificial, fake, positive imagery can do some good to you. How much harm can it be done by receiving those harmful speakers' noise? Right? Compared to this, see, each other. You know. That's why on this basis, you must what? Positively refuse. Okay? Positively refuse. It is very hard to refuse, believe me. You know? Very hard to refuse. You need to put extraordinary spiritual effort, really. Yeah. Otherwise, when you're sitting all by yourself and having cancer in your body, you know, do you know what's going to happen? Whenever you feel <coughs> something you ate, you know, lunch is uh, not digesting well, <coughs> then suddenly Satan says what? Speaker says, your cancer is spreading. <laughs> oh, it can go your brain, you know, go to your brain. <laughs> and then you can go down to your liver. Oh. Then you then you are positively what? Imagining under the instruction of the instructor called Satan. Can you see that? He is an excellent instructor to give you what? Dreadful positive imagery to injure you. Yes. This is great controversy. Don't participate. Don't give yourself into that, see? Really? See, people, people just think this is natural. This is nothing natural. This is what? This is all what? Spiritual manipulation, my brothers and sisters, really. You're being what? Manipulated. See? Yeah. If you can Really understand this. Wow, wow, this is right. I have been manipulated so long time. Okay, what can I do? You know, this is new beginning. See, you need to positively refuse. 
Okay. Okay. So, you know what happened to many women, you know? Uh, many cancer patients, especially with uh, like, you know, breast cancer, you know? Breast cancer is very damaging, right? Emotionally. Why? Because you are violated severely as a woman, right? Because this is a symbol of woman, you know, become cancerous. What a emotional what trauma, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Uh, even though medically speaking, this is no, you know, no longer in use, right? Yeah. However, emotionally speaking, in, in terms of what meaning wise, this is very important, you know. Yeah. So its meaning has been damaged. Okay? And that's why when the meaning is damaged as a woman, then there's lots of noise coming from speakers, you know. And uh, especially it can make you what? Doubt your husband, right? Yeah, it's very interesting. I hear that all the time. And then uh, cancer is spreading. And then Satan says, when you, Satan think when he captured you enough, then he begin to tell you a lie. Do you know where your husband is? <laughs> it's terrible. You know? And this happens to almost everyone who's suffering with the cancer, you know, struggling with the cancer. You don't have to have a cancer to be suffering, <laughs> you know, yeah. Boy, do you know what to do? Yeah. You have to positively fight against it. This is an extraordinary fight, really. Those, you know, I, you know, uh, since... Uh, 1982, I've been in this business, right? It is not really business, but this is a really serious business, you know. Uh, even though it doesn't give me, you know, make me that much money, you know. And, uh, uh, you know what? I feel free. I don't have to draw any salary. You know, I, I, nobody give me salary, okay? And somehow I have to live. I'm, I feel so what? Free. I don't have to ask to my boss, you know, can I go to vacation in this, between uh, August 10th and 7th? I don't have to ask for that. You know. But it is totally voluntary. And uh, now, when women have getting into that positive imagery, imagery session with the Satan, okay? You know, you know where the Satan is pulling you? Usually those patients eventually come to the funeral. Yeah, yeah they come to the funeral. You know, they, they spread, then, oh, then, the, then uh, somebody called the ambulance. Then, then, you know, uh, then you reach the what? You arrive the emergency room, then you are what? Uh, you, then, uh, then you're finally dead. You know. Then you move to funeral. Then finally there's a funeral service. You know. And then you're imagining everything. You're, you're having funeral. You're lying in the what? Casket. Then you found a strange woman sit standing right next to your husband. <laughs> and you're very angry. You're very angry. At the same time, what? Satan stirs up hatred toward, toward your husband. So this husband, you know, coming back home, you know, dropping by in a flower store, right? And bought, uh, you know, a couple of uh, rows. Honey, here. And she says, no. <laughs> Why? What happened? She cannot tell the story. 
<laughs> right? It's so silly, but she is angry anyway. Do you want to live that way? See? So many people live this way. They hear the voice of what? The positive imagery therapy session by Satan. Really? He is expert leading that session with you, if you let him, you know? Even though you don't let him, he will do it. Because he has what? He forces you. God will never do the session even though you don't want. You don't want to. But Satan will force upon you. See? That's why you are supposed to what? Forcefully refuse it. You know that? Yes. yes. <coughs> Forcefully refuse it. Okay. And that's why you need to do something very extraordinary. Okay. So many people don't want to be extraordinary. They want to be what? Ordinary. But when you are in extraordinary situation, ordinary way of the doing something will not solve any problems. When you are under extraordinary situation, you have to do something, what? Extraordinary to conquer the problem. That extraordinary problem. Don't sit there and being passive. Right? Yeah. So many patients are ready to be passive. Okay, doc, you're the doctor. You know? And we doctors teach them to be passive. Right? Because I am in charge being passive. Uh -uh. No. You have to be what? Actively engaged to do this extra, to come out of this one, extraordinary situation, no human being can help you to get out. Okay. Do you know what extraordinary thing to do? Come closer to God, extraordinarily closer to Him. You know? Yes. That's the only way. And uh, not many people wants to be really extraordinary. Even though they are at what? In extraordinary situation. And I ask people to pray. I don't mean that you just pray. You actually pray desperately, you know? Extraordinary desp with extraordinary desperation. Okay. If you cannot pray, of course, when you're under depression, when you have a cancer, you're so fearful, you know, you don't know what to say even. Or you haven't been a, a good Christian a uh, long time, and you don't know what kind of word to utter, right? Yeah. But you know what? Still, you need to what? Express that your will, that you want to pray extraordinary. Yeah. Outwardly, really, what do you do? God does not really, really care what kind of word you are uttering, really. You know what God is looking at when you're praying? Only thing God really see is what? How desperate you are, that's all. No matter how beautiful word you're uttering, you know, you're just the what? Uh, you're uttering beautifully without what? Desperation. Sorry. You know? You're not in the need yet. See? And I remember, you know, when I found one of my child was into the drug. Oh! I just fell down on the carpet. I said, God, please. No. I know desperation. No. I have many desperate situations. No. 
And if you do, you know, all my desperate prayer has been successfully answered. Really, really. It was totally hopeless situations. Really. I cannot really get into the detail for the privacy of my children, okay? <laughs> But, uh, you know, it is, uh, you cannot believe it. But now, you know, God solved the problem. Just, just, ah, oh, praise the Lord. You know, that's why I am full of spark, you know that? Yeah. Because I've been to extraordinary situations. And I was desperately, extraordinarily desperate. You know what? Sometimes I cannot even pray. Why? Because of worry, the fear. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, it's bombarding me. I could not utter the word of prayer. You know? In desperation, do you know what I did? I stood up at 2 o'clock in the morning. In the hotel room, I sang because other than you know, other than singing, I didn't know what to do. But I did not wanna what accept that kind of noise from Satan. Really, I didn't wanna hear it, you know. But it's keep on coming. If I if I if it, you know keep on being quiet because I have to pray, I can hear his voice. Oh, 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 oh. My hand is like that, but I was with the saint. Oh, oh yes, you know. Oh. So I had to stand up. You know, yes. And I sang. You know, the songs. My favorite songs are what. You know, I don't know in English. But, Hanul ganun balgun giri ne ape itsuni, and you repeat and repeat. Usually, after five times repetition, I know some serotonin is coming. There's a spark, and. My serotonin gene is getting activated. I begin to feel what? Calmness. I say, thank you, thank you. Then I can pray. Oh Lord, he is not my daughter. He is your daughter. I put her into your hand, Lord. I'm not going to worry. I'm your son too. Okay, so give me more melatonin. <laughs> I need to give lecture tomorrow morning, <laughs> and I go to bed. I wake up six o'clock. Wow! Thank you, thank you. God did it, you know. So repeating those kind of days, you know, many many years, really. Yeah, desperate. <coughs> In that desperation, it was like uh, the furnace, which is seven times hotter, right? It's extraordinarily hotter. It was extraordinary situation. Satan wanted to kill me. He was putting extraordinary what effort to kill me, to make me sick. Right, and I counted back right with extraordinary desperation. We can do anything but the desperation, right? That's only weapon we have: desperation. See, yeah. Then, then God will be with me, right? And then, finally, He will be with me, just like what? He was with three friends of Daniel, right? In that furnace, which is seven times hotter. You know what? After whole things over, God never put off the fire. You know that? We always pray, God, put off the fire, <laughs> clear the cancer. You know? No, no. We need to pray. What? 
Give me the peace. Let me be able to dance in this furnace, right? God will answer to that. See, this is extraordinary request, and God will answer extraordinary peace. See. Yeah. And if you experience that, you know, wow, it sort of empowers you, right? Uh, enlightens you, and yes, you know, uh, and you know you are sparked, right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit came upon you, you know, and then you have, now you know, you received the power, see? Then you say, Wow, it's worth it. For me to have a cancer, it's worth it. Without cancer, I could never experience this. Amen. Then you conquered cancer at that point. Amen. That's all. You already have victory. Amen. You know, at that point, cancer can kill you. It's no problem. Right? Yes. Because you already what? Conquered cancer. Amen. Cancer is beyond your consideration. See? Yes, that's what God wants to do with you, right? Yes, yeah. really. You know, but even after the furnace is gone, so God did not put off the fire. Who put off the fire? Satan put off the fire, you know, because he was shocked. It's a king Nebuchadnezzar put off the fire. He himself, right? which represents Satan, right? And then Daniel's three friends came out of the furnace. Do you know what Bible says? There's a, any tinge of what? Any kind of burn, not even smell. They were healthier than ever. This is what God wants to achieve with you. Right? Amen. Yes. You know, the cancer may be burning right now so hot, so desperate. But you know what? Keep on dancing with the Jesus Amen. in that furnace, right? Then you'll come out that furnace someday and they will, people will be amazed. Wow, you look even healthier than ever before. <laughs> Then you know the story of Daniel's three friends. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Okay. Oh dear loving Father, you are the spark. You give us spark. And Satan has his spark, which is killing us. Oh, Father, we become so sinful. That's why we have no problem receiving the spark of death. It's so natural for us. The death is so natural with us, Father. Life is so extraordinary for us. Father, let us be acquainted with you. Let us be acquainted with being extraordinary because you are there with us, Father. Father, this extraordinary picture, extraordinary power you give us will really convert even King Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. So, Father, we are trying we pray to you with our desperation. And please answer our prayer. Even though we do not utter anything because we don't know what to say. Let us trust you that you know everything. Because you are extraordinarily loving God for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, we need to sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, cast out. 
but in the world of being Jesus, my smile, smile. Just like a flower's blooming, you can be joyful in the Lord. Put a smile upon your face, cheer up and sing together. Hey, Lord, you are loving Jesus. Smile, smile, smile. Okay, when you sing, put a smile upon your face, okay? You need to know, put a smile upon your face, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Try one more time, okay. And don't forget, Loving Jesus, smile, smile, smile. Just like a flower's blooming, you can be joyful in the Lord. Put a smile upon your face, cheer up and sing together. Praise the Lord to a loving Jesus, smile.